Now, I know we made these lights blink a few episodes ago, but this time we've got an actual trigger mechanism. So welcome everybody, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield, and here we are getting close to the end of the rebuild of the Fallout 4 laser rifle, and I've got it jury-rigged here on my table, let's not have that fall over. And today what we're doing is building the proper trigger mechanism that's a lot closer to what you see in the actual game, because what this guy had before was just a micro switch. So let me swap over to my other camera. And you can see here is the completed piece. And when I pull the trigger, of course, now you can't see the lights blinking. But that's how the system works. So let's build this guy right now. So we're starting today's build off by taking a look here in Photoshop at the trigger mechanism itself. What I'm thinking is happening, obviously being a sci-fi weapon, is this point right here is probably the pivot point of the trigger. So you pull the trigger back here, this part up here kind of gets moved forward. How this thing's going to work from a functionality perspective is I'm going to hide my little switch up here so that just the tiny metal part of the switch itself is going to be visible. So most of the black body is going to be up here out of the way. And when I pull this trigger, it's going to move this piece down, which is going to be restrained a little bit by a spring. So I'm going to have to get some kind of small spring here. So it'll break the connection to the switch. This will cause the Arduino pin to go high because it's got a pull-up resistor on it. And therefore I can use that logic kind of reversed to figure out that the weapon is now being fired. Step one is to build this piece here inside Blender and make sure I've got it the right size. Okay, so I'm going to start by adding a new cylinder. This, of course, is this piece right here. And for this cylinder, I want to make it about an inch. So let's go 25 millimeters, 25 millimeters. Then I need to build the actual kind of trigger. Yeah, I guess we can call it the trigger. So to accomplish that, I'm bringing in my reference image. And I'm going to, let's see, scale it up so that it more or less matches about what I want to do. So, okay, let's build the actual shape of the trigger. Going to add another plane in here. We'll scale it up a bit. Delete all but one of the vertices. And then I'll just build a shape doing, you know, one vertice at a time. So it looks about right for the trigger. I need to add a few more quick details first. Like we got to punch a hole for the bolt down here, or actually, you know, right there. And then add the little, I guess this is an, um, some sort of end nut of some sort. We'll do a little detail for that. So next up is a Boolean operation to punch the hole for the bolt. That looks pretty good right there. And then I'm just going to merge all these pieces together minus the reference image. Come on, deselect the reference image, please. There we go. Uh, also, let's get rid of that too. Oh, the heck with it. There we go. All right, so this is going to become our final trigger right here. The last thing I need to do from this angle, I want to make sure the bottom is all lined up because you can see here when you have two objects or two meshes that you join together, it's usually not perfectly lined up. So we're just going to scale Z zero and that should line them up right about where you want them. Okay, so time to print this piece out and see how it fits on the rifle. So I've got the trigger completed from the 3D print and I'm going to install it on the rifle. Now one little change here from the actual design of the particular piece is that it appears my reference images, the trigger is on the same side as the fusion cell. However, I generally carry the rifle like this with the fusion cell side facing my body just because that's kind of natural for me as a right handed person. So therefore, I'm going to move the trigger to the opposite side. Plus, the switch is already over there, so that makes life a little bit easier. 
But what I need to do is clear out this little hodgepodge thing I've got here hiding just the little micro switch and install the trigger right there. Okay, well, I'll have to reprint the trigger at some point. Oopsie daisy, that doesn't have any power. So here's one obvious problem. If I'm going to mirror the trigger to the other side of the rifle, I also got to mirror the 3D print, right? Because otherwise it just does that. So at some point I got to reprint the trigger, but mirrored, which isn't a big deal. Um, I can still proceed at the moment to build how this trigger is supposed to work. Two days until I get a haircut. It's a big monumental achievement here in Michigan. No, but it's kind of weird, the topic of all the crazy stuff going on out there, how it affects random supply chains. Apparently the Lowe's by me, instead of handing out their usual branded bags for, you know, at the registers, they're giving generic plastic bags out. How odd. And there's apparently no um, wood right there because there's obviously a wood frame that goes through most of the stock but apparently not right there. Let me get a, um, a washer too then to get a little bit of strength going. Here's what I think I will do. I'm going to go back and modify this, flip it over so it's the right direction. But then instead of having a little 3D printed post here, I'm going to actually run a small bolt through it and use that to secure the spring to the trigger and then the spring itself will actually have to be attached maybe somewhere I might just have it up here for now but then I'll find a way to anchor it to the final 3D printed part somehow and that way when I pull the trigger the spring will be extended a little bit and then I release it'll pull it back close the switch and turn off the firing mechanism but more on that in a bit when I get the new 3D printed trigger done. Okay, here we go. I've got the modified trigger. That's going to go on the right side of the rifle. And by right, I actually mean the correct side, which happens to be the right side of the rifle if you look. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so let's get this guy set up. pointed out earlier in the video but now it's becoming a real problem. This area right here where the trigger is attached through I guess is not wood. It's not a, a wood piece for whatever reason. It's just foam. So what's happening is the foam just doesn't hold this bolt in place very well. It's just kind of wiggling around and making it more and more spread out. So if I tried to use this spring to hold the trigger in place, I, I'm just going to hold it back here. It doesn't. Like, the trigger doesn't really rotate. You got to like. You kind of have to like move the trigger in place, and then you can rotate it. So watch if I can. I got to push it down, then I can rotate it. It doesn't rotate by itself just like that because this area of foam was offering no integrity for this mechanism. So what I'm going to have to do is rebuild that area. <laughs> I got to rebuild a chunk of this rifle anyway because I got new parts to go in here so hey why not? Let's take it all apart. Oh, as a note, you saw me just rip off this whole piece right here. I've got 3D printed replacements. Um, this was a couple episodes ago, link in the show notes. Now what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to build a 3D printed part to fill in this gap that was just foam. That should be a little bit more structurally sound and should be good enough to operate the trigger. So what I'm going to do is take a picture of this with my phone 
and then I can bring that into Blender and build in the missing pieces. Now I am including the existing trigger right here, and I make sure that's in the picture, and that's gonna be my known size reference because I have the model already loaded in Blender, this at the proper size, I can scale my reference image to what it needs to be in order to make sure that it comes out the exact size. Let's jump over to Blender and do a little bit more modeling. Here's a 3D printed filler piece for the rifle stock. Let's put this in, drill the hole for the trigger, and see if everything works as expected. Now, I'm going to be putting this in with a little bit of super glue right now, but I imagine I'm going to do a bit of a more secure hold for it later on when I finish the entire rifle in the next video in the series. Well, I screwed that up really good. So I just did the test fit of this piece in the rifle. And yeah, well, you know, um, okay, I'll be honest with you. I tried to put this piece in the rifle first with glue, it didn't work. So now I'm gonna drill out the hole first, then I'll refit it back in the rifle and we'll be good to go then. I should have done this first. So let me do that right now. So that's the idea. You can see there I have the switch in the side of the screen. So when it's closed like that, I know that the trigger's not being pressed, and then as soon as I pull it, it'll open up. So all I really need to do is clear this out a little bit right here. Oh, can't see in the camera. Clear this out a little bit right here, and then have this switch set right there with just the metal piece is just sticking out far enough so that the trigger can hit this thing like that. <laughs> Laser rifle hit the switchboard. There's a reason why I want to move this thing over here. Originally, let me think here for a minute, yeah, so originally the way the code was written is when the pin goes low it knows it's firing because I was deep pressing the switch when I fired, but now that it's opposite to where the switch opens up when I pull the trigger, I'm going to have to go ahead and just change some code around in Arduino, so let's jump over to that and take care of that part right now. So right here is where I set up the pull up resistor, that's not changing. Then down here, Trigger status is where I read the trigger pin. I need to figure out where exactly, um, let's see, where exactly is reference? So there's one, trigger status, I read it, I check here, and then I check there for the opposite condition. Okay, so this is pretty easy. I should just have to switch this value. So when trigger status is high, this is gonna be do the select a fire mode, and then down here, when it's low, the trigger's not being depressed. So I should just swap those two values, and that should be all the change I need to make to get the code working with the new trigger setup. Back to building. Okay, switch is in the right place, I pull the trigger, click, fire. All thanks to a $1,000 video switcher board. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Roland VH1D that I've had for, I don't know, two, three years now. It's a really nice board. It's just, it was the cheapest board at the time. $1,000 seems like a lot of money, but it was the cheapest board. Black Magic has several that are like 600 and 300-ish, but, you know. <laughs> I now feel justified paying the price so I can do this one shot without video editing. <laughs> But seriously, guys, let me 
go back to normal mode. Well, thank you guys all for watching. We can see what we got here is a fully functional trigger system for the laser rifle, and this is freaking awesome. So I promise for real, there's only one more video left in this series. We're gonna take all these parts we've worked on over the last four or five videos here, gonna get a few more printed off to replace some of the not so nice looking detail foam pieces, and then I can do all the final coat of paint and call this project done. And that's what we'll be doing next time when we return to this series here in the tabletop battlefield. But of course, we've got some micro flash work to finish up, two videos left in that series. I've got some more 3D printed terrain sitting over there on my desk. I'm gonna be having a tutorial series on the not too distant future, and I'm sure I'll come up with some other things. So with that, thank you guys all for watching. Once again, I'm Jason, and have a great week.